Good evening, friends. I'm happy to be back here in the auditorium tonight in the service of the Lord Jesus. And now I'm just a little bit tired, preached twice a day hard, and I'm just a little bit worn out. I was telling some of my brethren a few moments ago uh, on preaching this afternoon, I, I'm not too much of a preacher, but I hope you got what I meant. What, <clears throat> that the, I'm a great believer in the blood. I think without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And I just can't stress that enough. <clears throat> and my, my motive this afternoon in speaking of the lamb was the, the lamb under the old sacrificial law. I thought I'd better kind of straighten it just a little bit, or not straighten it, but just bring it down to where you'd see it, and maybe it wouldn't be misunderstood. That under the old law, when a lamb, a burnt offering was made, and the lamb died the innocent substitute for the guilty sinner, the life that went out of the lamb's blood cell could not return back to the man, so he come out of the, the church, the holy place, with the same desire to sin that he had when he went in. The only thing he had was an answer of a good conscience that he know the innocent victim had died for his guilty sins. But the life of the lamb, out of the blood cell of the lamb, could not return back into the human being. You understand now? But when Christ died, the life that was in Christ's blood cell returns back to the human being as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, bringing the believer into relationship with God after he's been cleansed through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ. You see what I mean? Amen. Now watch. We're going to bring it down to one little place so you can see it. Every little cell in the human body, in any body, starts first from a little germ. And the germ comes from the male sex, no matter if it's a fly, the same thing. It comes from the male sex, the little germ of life. And the little germ of life that was in the lamb, first it had to be a spirit before it could be a germ. And that's what we're dealing with, like sickness, a cancer. What is it? A germ. What's a tumor? A germ. What's tuberculosis? A germ. All those diseases are germs called cancer, tumor, tuberculosis. That's medical terms. What they are is demons in the light of the scripture. They are tormentors. Comes into your body to shorten your days on the earth. Now, God doesn't intend them to be there. He doesn't want them there. But Satan, the arch enemy of God and man, is the one that puts them there. They're his little death, little imps, demons. Ask the doctor what starts cancer. Ask him where a tumor comes from. When I was interviewed at Mayo Brothers years ago, I asked him, I said, isn't that beginning of a germ? Yes. I said, isn't a germ life? Yes. I said, doctor, where does that life come from? He said, nobody knows. The devil. That's right. What it is, is a lie. Now remember, the devil can't create, but the devil can take and perverse something that God has created. You understand? Perverse. Now that was a lie that's been perverse from a germ of life to a germ of death. That's what the devil does to your very life. Your life. He can perverse it to unbelief, and you'll die in your sins and can't come to Christ. If you will let God, he will sanctify that spirit or give you a sanctified spirit, the Holy Spirit, and will pass you from death unto life. You see? Now that little germ that was in the animal that started off, one little germ, making it, of course, is billions of them, little cells. But that one little cell being broke left the life of the animal out. But the life could not, now it answered of a good conscience towards God, but could not come back to the believer. His conscience was the same as he went in there, only he knew he had done what God said to do. But the life that was in the lamb, the animal lamb, could not come back to the human being because it was the life of an animal. 
But when the blood cell of Jesus Christ was broke, and in that blood cell was the Spirit of God. For the Holy Ghost overshadowed a virgin, not knowing any male of the earth. The Holy Ghost overshadowed her and created around himself. The Holy Spirit entered the womb of this virgin and created a blood cell around himself. And then when that blood cell was broke at Calvary, freeing the Spirit through the mist of the blood cell, offering of himself, the believer comes through the blood of Jesus Christ back in. And the Lamb that died, the Spirit that went from the Lamb, returns again on the believer. And he becomes the Son of God through the offering of the blood of Jesus. Do you get it now? Amen. The Lord bless you. I don't speak too good. I'm awful slow, and and I I preach around where these full gospel preachers preach so hard that you you can hear them without a microphone. And my little bitty voice and my old slow Baptist ways just don't let me get to it as fast as they do. So that, I just try to make it real clear. You see that I uh, want to trying to get to you. Now, tonight being Sunday night, I see now and then in the audience an Indian. I wonder if there's any Indian here with us from the, up on the reservation yesterday. Would you hold up your hands? Any Indians that was on the reservation yesterday, would you raise your hand? Yes, there's some back there. Well, praise be to God. Yeah, I see they can understand English. I want to say to you, my Indian brother and sister in the Lord Jesus, at that, I have been a preacher for 23 years. Now, I've had thousands of revivals, and by the grace of God, right into a million souls now led to Christ in our meetings. But I have never had a meeting on the North America continent that produced the spiritual results as that did yesterday in that Indian meeting. I have never seen it in my life among those people, poor Kind of downcast. That's where God, you know, you have to get in trouble sometimes to really realize you need God. When he got everything, why well, it don't seem like you have any need for him. Just when you're dying, you hope that he'll give you a home in heaven. But those poor Indians, the real genuine 100% Americans, is the ones who was needy yesterday, and the Lord Jesus visited them with the greatest anointing of the Holy Spirit that I ever had and any prayer line in the North America. God bless you all and keep you. And you listen to this, my Indian brother and sister. You will find out that the days to come, already I guess you're knowing it, that there was so many things done yesterday, you'll always remember that as long as you live. You just see if that isn't right. Some of the brothers tell me around 30 or 35 visions. That's 10 times as many as I can get to here. And they'll go on knees and pray for around 300 people besides what come to the car as the service is over. So happy for that. My heart is certainly warmed and moved. And I know you white people here in the meeting and Spanish and so forth as fellow citizens of the kingdom with these Indian people. Aren't you happy that the Lord Jesus visited them in a great outpouring? And everybody that knows me knows how I like to hunt. And Mr. McAnally, uh, he may be in the audience now, a friend, is a very dear friend of mine. He's always wanting to take me hunting. And we had a plan to go a hunting Saturday because it was an off day. But God spoke to my heart and said, go to the Indians. And I'm so happy I went. I thank Mr. McAnally very much, and I'm so happy that the Lord take me up to the Indian Reservation. And Brother McAnally, bless your heart, you and I will go hunting some other time. <laughs> I was hunting for souls yesterday for the Lord Jesus. Now, tonight, we won't take much time, just read some scripture, go right straight into the Word and the prayer line, and I'll, maybe Brother Moore, Brother Brown, Brother Ballard here, some of them will probably Help me speak some now as the days were going right straight from this meeting to another meeting of five days. Right out of that went into a ten days meeting. Just on and on. And God help. Now I see there's many standing on the stairways and in the hall and so forth and around the sides of the building. We're sorry that you have to stand. 
But we pray that God will do something tonight that will repay a thousand times for coming to the meeting. God bless you, everyone. Now shall we bow our heads just a moment for a word of prayer. How many will raise your hands and say, Brother, remember me in prayer as you're praying. Would you put up your hands so the Lord Jesus can see you? God bless you every word. That's fine. He sees every hand. Our Heavenly Father, as we come upon the grounds of the shed blood of Jesus, oh, God, give us the vision tonight of seeing what that was when Emmanuel's veins were plucked and drawn out the blood cell of the dying Lamb of God through there, through sin, breaking the blood cell, freeing the life inside, that now the worshiper coming to God comes through the shed blood of the innocent Lamb of God, entering in to Zoe, the life of God himself, becoming then a son and daughter of God upon the basis of the shed blood. Then we go forward to carry on the work of reconciliation that Christ died for at Calvary, teaching sinners that they can be reconciled to God through the shedding of his blood. And in any stripes was included in this marvelous atonement that the Holy Ghost himself is here out of the blood cell to witness it to be truth that by his stripes we are healed. Oh, how we thank thee, Father. Now, thou didst see the hands of these people. You know everything they have need of and the very desire of their heart. I pray, Father God, that you'll give to everyone here, especially this blessing tonight, everlasting life. Heal all the sick and the afflicted. Call back the backsliders. Get glory unto thy own self as we present ourselves as empty vessels that the Holy Spirit would fill now for the service of God. This we present to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Now, just for a few moments, to approach God upon the basis of his word. If the engineer would, maybe be a good idea to step this up just a little bit, if you would, because with more people, it makes the volume cuts down. In the book of St. Luke, the 8th chapter, and beginning about the 50th verse. That's fine, engineer, who's doing it? You hear me all right way back in the back now? That's good. Up in the balconies, can you? That's fine. All right. Now listen close for a few moments. But when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, Fear not, only believe she shall be made whole. Now may the Lord add his blessings to this word, reading of the word. We're speaking tonight of a miracle that taken place in the Bible. And as I turn just now, speaking of miracle, looking down, I see a little boy sitting here, a little polio victim with braces on his limb. God grant that a little child will be able to walk again without his braces. Here lays cops, a couple of wheelchairs sitting here tonight, two or three of them. We pray that God will empty these up tonight. Only believe, my dear beloved friends. Now remember, I could not heal you. I have nothing to heal with, but God perhaps is the only one can heal you. I don't know what your troubles is, but surely if God will come down in the Word and then come down in the Spirit and prove to you that He's here in the very principle that we're preaching that the Holy Spirit is here and will come and show you the same and prove to you by the Bible that Jesus died that you can be made whole, accept it. Just believe it with all your heart. Don't make a difference how you feel. Just when down in your heart you know that you're going to get well, don't be afraid. Move right out. That's God speaking to you. That's where that life come out of the animal, or not the animal, but out of the Son of God, coming back, witnessing to your heart that he has accepted your faith and glory. And you've got to get well. Now, we're speaking of a miracle that's taking place in the New Testament the healing of Jairus' daughter. 
a little priest at the temple. Wonderful lesson. If we just had the time to speak on it a while. Just previous to this chapter, we find one place there where the Son of God spent so much time in prayer. And if Jesus had to spend much time in prayer to stay in fellowship with the Spirit that was in him, how much more do you and I have to spend in prayer? Much time in prayer. If you only knew what time in prayer meant, what sometimes when you're in prayer, God changes the, the complete destination of different things that's going to happen. Do you believe that? Might be something fixing to happen, and your prayer could change the whole situation. Well, you say, if God knows it's going to happen, what will my prayer do? You remember when he stood there looking out upon the harvest, and he said, he was the Lord of the harvest. He said, the harvest is right, and labors are the few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest, that he'll send labors into his harvest. In other words, pray to me that I will send labors into my harvest, which I'm just telling you, it's such a needy thing. But part of it lays in human beings. Do you believe that? The kingdom of God lays within the human beings. Now, Jesus said in one place, I am the vine, ye are the branches. The vine can't bear fruit. The branches in the vine bears fruit. God cannot bear fruit on himself. It's got to take the church. Is that right? He's got to take you branches to bear fruit. And when you branches are yielded to the vine, then fruit comes forth. See what I mean? God wants your hands. He wants your eyes. He wants your tongue. He wants your lips. He wants your ears. He wants your hands and feet. So he can bring forth fruit through you. Now, Jesus put much time in prayer. One day there, he told his disciples, he said, now, cross over to the other side. He sent him away while he went up in the mountain to pray. While he was up there alone, really a storm coming up, I believe, I don't know, but I believe if I'd been the disciples, I said, I know he told us to go over, but I, I believe I'll just wait till he comes and goes along. I like for him to be along in these cases, don't you? So we see him now going up into the mountain to pray. The disciples thrust down into the sea and picked up their oars, and their little ship sail went up, and away they started oaring across to the other side, where Jesus was to meet them, on the other side. Then going in the absence of the Holy Spirit, on Christ then in visible form, on the road over trouble set in. And usually, if you start anywhere without Christ, trouble's on its road. That's Just right. as soon as the devil sees you out of fellowship with Christ, right then he'll set out on you as hard as he can. Just as soon as he sees you away from prayer, away from consecration, Satan will catch you right then if he possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's one night when Billy Paul, here my boy, he's a little bitty fellow, he's lived in a little two-room cabin and my wife had put this uh, floor wax on the linoleum on the floor, and it was real slick on the floor. And we had an old bucket out in the other room. The kitchen had two rooms. And we were sleeping in the front room, and the next room was the kitchen, and the bucket of water set out there, the dipper. And so he woke up and he said, Daddy, and I said, what, little bitty fella? He said, I want a drink. And I said, well, oh, I was so tired of my walk patrolling. And I said, honey, could you go get a drink there? It's just, just inside the door. He said, daddy, come go with me. And I said, oh, there's nothing to hurt you, honey. Just go inside the door. He said, daddy, I'm afraid to go unless you go with me. I thought, poor little fella. That's right. God, I'm afraid to go too unless you go with me. Father, I know it's all right, 
You are ordained ministers to go preach the gospel, but if you don't go with me, I'm afraid. Uh, you come go with me. So I got up and fell around, got him by the hand. We started through the room, and just as we started through the room, she had one of these little uh, rugs laying in there, and the little fellow slipped and would have pitched right forward on his face if I didn't have a hold of his hand. And I held him up like that to keep him from smashing right down on his face. I thought, truly, God, that's right. You just hold my hand in these slippery, dark places and things while I'm searching for the water of life. You just hold my hand as I Amen. move along. Jesus and them went, I mean, the disciples went away without Christ. Jesus went up on the mountain alone to pray. There was a battle to be fought just across the other side. Him being of the king of all prophets, the son of God, virgin born, knowing what the Father would have him do. He knew, felt the pressure of that battle coming, so he got up in the mountain alone to pray. That's the way. And as he was praying, he looked down upon the sea as the sun was going down, the winds were contrary, and the little old boat twisting and flipping around, just about to go under. They were scared, a little ship filling up. They were oaring with all they had in them. And they happened to look long about dark. And here come a man walking on the waters, going on a past them. He can get over all right. So here he come walking up past them. And they got scared and thought they seen something, a uh, uh, spirit, uh, what we would say today, something spooky. Here comes a man walking on the water, walking by them, and they were scared and were troubled. Here's the point. The only thing that could help them, they were so scared of it. And that's about the way it is today. When God comes down in an old-fashioned Holy Spirit, God-sent revival, people are born to get in the Spirit of God, yeah. and people are being healed in signs and wonders. The Holy Ghost comes in and moves over the audience, shows supernatural signs. The people of God say, ah, I'm afraid. That's a mental telepathy. That's the devil. I'm afraid of that. The only thing that can help you, they become scared of it. So Jesus said, don't be afraid. It's I. It's me. Just open up your heart tonight when he begins to move over the audience and see if he don't say, don't be afraid. This is me. I am your Savior. I come to heal you. Just believe it. Now I'll have him speak to you. Amen. See it? Just believe it. Only believe is the only thing you have to do. Now we see him crossing the waters. That just left another side where a great revival could have took place over in Gadaria. But instead of the revival taking place, the people didn't want no revival. See, if you don't want Christ, he won't push himself on you. He certainly won't. If that you have to want him first, blessed are they that hunger and do thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. That's it. When you hunger, even a blessing to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, watch what he did. He crossed that entire sea to go over on the other side to save one man that really was wanting to see him come. And he was a maniac of Gadaria. The maniac run out, being demon-possessed. Here come all the preachers out and looked at him. Said, we don't want no such a thing around here, casting out devils. Why, well, it cost us a whole herd of hogs. We can't have any revival. Well, they felt more at home with the devil and hogs than they did with Jesus. And that's right. Well, they, they wanted their hogs. They wasn't appreciating that man being delivered from that evil power. You know, that man, when he received his right mind and wanted to follow Jesus, Jesus told him to go back in the city and testify. When I get to glory, I want to see how much pressure his testimony had on all raising in Gadaria from then on. There he was, the maniac, recognized him quickly, a demon possessed, 
Then devils cried out of him and said, We know who you are, yeah. the Holy Son of God. Why do you come to torment us? Jesus said, Hold your peace and come out of him. And they said, If we come out, will you let us go over them hogs? He said, Take your pleasure, go on. And the hogs run down the river and drown about 2,000 of them. And the people come out and say, Oh my, if it's going to cost us like that, we just can't have the meeting. So all the preachers them stand around and said, Now you just go on back out of our country from one side to the other. We don't want nothing like that around here. That's too mysterious. That's spooky. We don't want that. We just rather stay here and have our priest to teach us and so forth. We don't want that. That's that's not the thing that we wanted. We thought it would be different from that. You know, things don't change too much as the times go on, especially in that that realm. They don't want it. As many revivals has been preached across the country, this ought to be one big hallelujah from the east to the west, from the north to the south. That's right. But people don't want it. You people do. You're sincere at heart. Children of God, you want it. But look what a respect you are to the millions. See? Yeah. Yes. Legion wanted the revival, all right. He was ready. But the rest of them didn't want it. Jesus, when he crossed over, come into the bushes on the other side, there was a woman there that had an issue of blood. She sold everything that she had, spent all of her living to the doctors. The doctors had doctored her for a number of years, no doubt. But all of her living was spent, and she didn't get any better. She got worse all the time. Now, it wasn't a good testimony for a doctor there, was it? But anyhow, doctors do a part. They're good. But they don't heal. God's a healer. So then when the, the Jesus, she had heard about him. There's no doubt at all. Or she couldn't have that faith because faith comes by hearing. Now, I can imagine some little boy down at the river that morning or the lake with his fishing lines in, catching him a mess of fish. And the first thing you know, he looked coming across the sea, this little bunch of tired disciples, wore in the boat, Jesus nodding in the back, he was so tired and worn. But the Father had told him, cross over, I got a need for you to do on the other side. Man of God are led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Jesus said, I can do nothing in myself, but what I see the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. Yeah. That's his statement. So then in this case, what happened? God must have shown him to cross over the sea for he had a little borderline preacher over there that he wanted to get straightened out. So Jesus crossing over. Now his vision was set on your eyes. But that woman said, I believe that man is a good man. I believe that he is absolutely the Son of the Most High God. And I believe that in Him dwells the Spirit of God dwells in that man. So if He's been able to help others do something for other people, I believe if I can only get close enough to Him, now I ain't got no money, I'm a poor person, I don't know His attitude, He might require certain things, so I've spent all my money for the doctors, but I believe if I could only wind my way around through all the celebrity and everything, that I could touch his garment, I get healed. That's the way to believe it. Jesus didn't have no vision about her. He didn't know she was there. So he got out of the boat, and the people come down and said, Say, is this that prophet from the other side there? We've heard do so many miracles. Let's see what he'll do. And I imagine somebody run told the priest, and here they all come down and said, well, we'll see what he can do now. We'll just look around. Let's test his religion. Let's see what he believes. If he don't believe according to our doctrine, we won't have nothing to do with him. Still, times don't change very much. So anyhow, we'll just find out what he believes. And if he don't come just to our union line, we won't have him in our synagogues. There's not them fanatic revivals going to be around here of healing the sick and name. We won't cooperate with him one bit. No. I know Peter the fisherman. He's a good friend of mine. And I know Matthew the publican and so forth. His name is Levi. I know him, the tax collector. He's a good honest boy. 
I know him real well, but he's come over here now to start a revival, and first thing we're going to touch his doctrine and find out what he believes. Yeah. Then we'll see whether we cooperate with him or not. Jesus didn't pay attention to that. He had one thing to do, that's the will of God. Amen. He went moving on. This little woman stood there. Here she comes down, looking around, that poor little weak, frail thing with a blood issue for several years, hemorrhaging away. And she come down, a little pale face, looking around. I can see the priest say, Say, what you doing down here? Well, uh, I want to see him. Now, you're not going to get mixed up in this kind of stuff, are you? You've been, you've been our best member. So we don't want you around this meeting at all. Uh-huh. Well, she stoops down and got away from that fella. Moved on over here. Here stood the general board. So there she had trouble again. So she slips on down around where the fisherman was. And here she comes crawling up between their feet, moving up like that. Look up and see where it was at. And she touched his garment and said, that's just all I need. So away she went off out there and she said, oh, I'm so thankful. And I'm healed. For she felt in her body. Something way down in the air said, that's enough. That's all you need. Oh, little woman, crawl the same way tonight. Do ever old long road demon of doubt that stands around and tells you the days of miracles is past. You've got to come up on a platform. You've got to have hands laid on you. Crawl right on between there. Do you touch his God? Amen. When you touch him, something happened down here. He said, I don't need to get on a platform. Don't need nothing now. Watch what happens then. Watch what he'll do. Jesus turned around, looked around, said, uh, who touched me? He said, why, well, who touched you? Well, I said, everybody's patting you on the back, trying to shake their hands and so forth. Everybody's touching you. All of this bunch of fishermen up and down the bank here. Said they, he said, yes, but somebody touched me different from that. Right. Said, strength has gone out of me. I'm getting weak. So he turned around with those great, lovely eyes as he moved in his pathetic look. Man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, moved around over the audience probably more than there is standing here. And he looked out there in the audience. He seen the little woman <laughs> level right down on her. She seen that she couldn't be hit. He said, thy faith has healed thee. I have heard, but your faith in the program of God, <laughs> your faith has made you whole. Amen. And she come and fell down to worship him. Jesus' main alternative for crossing the sea that night, there's a little fellow over there who was a priest by the name of Jeriah. Nice little fellow. But you know, the ministerial association had him all sold up. He really believed on Jesus, but he was afraid to let it out. <laughs> Poor little Jeriah. What a faith he was in. So they told him, anybody that believes on that fanatic, that the Elzebub, that fortune teller, if anybody believes on that now, we're going to strike their name off of the synagogue books right now. Any man that believes him. Little Trice way down in his heart believed it. He believed it. God looking around, knowed everything. He knew Trice believed that. So he just gave him an opportunity to express his belief. Sometimes God will do that. Well, he said, oh, perhaps, uh, <clears throat> yes, that's right. In the association when all the ministers met at the, at the council, you see, they met around there. He said, yes, uh, that, that's probably right, brother. Mm -hmm. But in his heart, he had faith in Christ. Yeah, amen. All right. Notice time went on. After a while, God moved down on his son and gave him a vision of something across the lake over here to happen. At the same time, God began to prepare the grounds. So he had one little girl, about 12 years old. That's the way God gets in his heart now. He goes down to his little girl, and she gets sick. Well, you see, Jeriah's being a borderline believer, he just believes so much. He didn't know how to believe the rest of it. We got a lot of them today, haven't we? And so then when he, his little girl got sick, 
Well, of course, the only thing there is to do is send for the doctor. Because they believe that the days of miracles has passed and what was such as that. And that stuff on the other side of their lake over there was nothing but fanaticism. So nothing to that. A fellow over there possessed with demons himself going around casting out demons by Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And the only reason they could accuse that because he didn't believe their doctrine. So, but the only thing Jairus could do was call the doctor. Perhaps a doctor come in, a gentleman in every respect, set out his satchel, took out his herbs and looked at her tongue and looked all over and listened to her heart, gave her a few doses of medicine, went away, and the little girl got worse. So the doctor comes back again early in the afternoon, examined her again, said, she's getting pretty low. So all night long, her little fever raged. The doctor set up the bed as a faithful man taking her pulse, looking at her eyes and doing everything that he could, rubbing all the medicine he could and pouring into her everything he could. And at the same time, God was working on the scene. God was sending the Son of God across the ocean, across the waters, coming over. The boat was a pitching and a toiling and going on. The old oars of rocking and the boat was squeaking. Not water at all, but he's pulling on a cross because he had something to do on the other side. Little dry set up all night, perhaps him and his wife, making hot applications and putting on her. And the next morning, the doctor said, well, dry, I want you to come out here just a minute to one side. Walk out to one side and say, dry, I hate to tell you this, but your daughter is losing ground fast. Her heart's weakening now. We're supposed to be between 70 and 80. It's got out between 30 and 40. There's something on that order. She's losing fast. That's right. You being a clergyman here, a member of the council, the Sanhedrin, there's only one thing that I'll go to do, Jairus. Go back and put your arms around your wife and tell her to get ready for the shock because the child's got to die. There's not a thing. Jairus, you know, I'm your physician. I'm a specialist. And my medical education shows me that the girl, the respirations are falling, and there's nothing left but the girl to die. Poor old Jairus, his heart began to beat heavy like that. And I believe about that time something began to move down. That's not my last hope, doctor. So I see him go in and tell his wife and say, Why? The doctor just brings us this news as he drove away a while ago in his little chariot that the uh, our little girl's going to die. My wife, I've got a little confession I want to make. Yes, what is it, Father? Well, you know, one of my friends come from across the other side over there, and they told me that that Jesus of Nazareth, now, wait a minute, honey, you know, this position you have in churches on meat and bread. Well, but honey, somehow or another way down deep in my heart, I believe he's what he says he is. Because positionally, I see in the scripture, it's about time for him to be here and to do these things, so I believe he is the Son of God. Watch your eyes. Have you gone off at the deep end, you'd say? How could this be? Well, look, honey, I'm going to heal some people on the other side. Our baby's laying dying. Now I can hear his wife say, you know, honey, I was just testing you a little bit. You know, the wife can do that right easy, or the husband either one. Say, I just test it truly. I had a friend to come by and tell me, and I believe on him. I believe in my heart, believe he is the Son of God. Oh, if we could only get over the lake and back in time before she dies. About that time, I see a little boy coming up the street. Yard. Everybody, everybody, Jesus of Nazareth just landed down there. New hopes. Amen. Faith begin to move. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. New hope begin to come. I can see the little priest say, Mother, it may mean my position here in the church, but that's my dying baby. Amen. I tell you, not wait till some other time. Wait. He had a need to get to Jesus right then. That's right. Not till I feel like it. It was time to move. And if there ever was a time to move, it's time to move now. Amen. Oh, he says, uh, not wait till I'm a better convenient time. Now is the time. It was time for action. And now is the time for action. Now is the time for you people with cancer that the doctors turned down. Now is the time for you people with heart trouble. The doctors 
houses is turned down. Yeah. Now's the time for you people sitting here lame and hung. That the doctors is turned down. Now's the time for you all on the stretcher. The doctors turned down. Now's the time to go into action. What kind of action? Let your faith loose. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing Jesus Christ raised from the dead. He's here. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing. They said he's right down on the hill there. Little child's trying to get his little coat and put on him like that. She said, where are you going, honey? I'm going to find him. That's the way to do it. Get his hat and puts it on. The first thing you know, here comes the ministerial group coming out. Jonas! Why the very audacity? Do you mean to tell me that you're going? Where are you going? The doctor just gave him a child up. My only hope, I've got to go down to that prophet's coming across down there, the Son of God. Why well, we will excommunicate you? <laughs> I can see him turn around and say, excommunicate what you want to. My faith is built and nothing less. <laughs> you are excommunicating you want to. I'll excommunicate myself. Faith done took a hold and but they can't stop it now. It's moving on. Why don't you rise? A learned man like you are, a scholar. Don't you know the days as miracles is past? No, sir, I don't. <laughs> no, sir, here I go. Oh, now, your eyes. You're only going to bring reproach. That's all. A man with your a dignitary like you are, with all the class that you uh, deal with, all your friends will turn you down if you ever join yourself with that bunch of fanatics. Don't make any difference. Something down in his heart told him to get to Jesus. He had a need. Yeah. And every man that really feels that tug of the Holy Spirit will lay aside everything else and come yeah. to him. Yeah. If you really get to need it bad enough, right. if it becomes between death and life, you lose the way what you right. right. Yes, he must get to Jesus. It's between death and life. He must find him right quick. And it might be later than you think. <laughs> Go to heaven quickly. The day that you seek me with all your heart, that's the day you'll be, I'll be found of you. When you seek me with all your heart. Say, now, wait a minute, your eyes. Your doctor's turned you down. He can't do nothing, and you know he can't down there. That's just a bunch of emotion. The man is mental telepathy. That's how he calls those people out in the audience. That's how those visions are false things. It's only a scheme. It's a trick. It's all made up. Don't put on that drive, but something down in drives his heart says it comes from God. Amen. And I've got to get there. Right down to the audience, he went pushing right and left. The first thing you know, he runs into Jesus. He said, Lord, oh my, my little girl is laying at the point of death. Come lay your hands upon her. That's all you have to do. Just come put your hands on her. She'll live if you'll come do it. Amen. Amen. Point of contact, Jesus' hands. Come lay your hands on her. Now the centurion, the, Je- the Gentile, didn't want that. He said, I'm not even worried that you come under my roof. He said, I'm a man. I have authority. I say to this and go do it, and he does it. I say to this and come here, and he does it. I, said, I have supreme rule over this man. And I recognize you as having supreme rule. I'm a man of authority, so I know what a man of authority means. You don't have to come. You just speak. That's right. Amen. Death will depart. Oh. How do you like Only speak the word. Yeah. And you will live. Amen. 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 I kind of like that better, don't you? Hallelujah. Speak the word. And you will live. Because I'll recognize you as being the supreme ruler of heaven and earth. Uh. Every demon power is under your Hallelujah. Amen. All demons are subject to you. I believe that you're the virgin born son of God. Just say the word. Yeah. I like that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Little old Martha, once you're out to meet Jesus, her brother already in the grave and decaying, rotting away, skin worms crawling in his face, falling in from the skin worms, eating him up. She said, Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, 
They're embalming her now, laying her out on the couch, putting the flowers around her. Yeah. My, I can see little Josh walking on, and his little heart beginning to skip a beat. He just didn't know what to do. Oh, my, what can I do? I can see Jesus moving, unconscious of any trouble. Amen. Uh, you can't imagine Jesus praying to find out how to go out and fast a few days see if he's got enough faith to do it. <laughs> God done told him, and he knew what was going to happen. He moves right along. He looks over to Josh. Josh looks over to him. He's the Lord. He said, don't fear. Only believe. You'll see the glory of God. I like that. On the little fellow went. His heart beating. The first thing you know, I can see the priest standing on the side of the road and said, I'm going to wait till we get you at the general council. Brother, we'll sure comb you down. Wait till we get you there. Josh looking at his eyes on Jesus. He didn't care what the council had to say about it. He was looking what Jesus said about it. He's moving right on. Got to the house. All the people are screaming and are going on, making a big ado. And Jesus walked up there and said, Now give peace for a little bit. Said, The girl's not dead. She's only asleep. Uh, uh, said, She's asleep. And the people said, Did you hear that? <laughs> With laying in there, we took the blood out of her body, and she's been bomb laying on the couch laying in there, and that holy roller fanatic comes over here and tries to tell her, tell us that she's not dead. Said so that shows what he is. That shows what a smart man he is. Oh, but he knew where they didn't. Amen. He said, Oh, let me get out of here. <laughs> Begin to scatter him from the right to the left. Little John sent up his hand and said, Yes, Master, I still believe you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I, I believe if you just lay hands on her, that she'll be all right. He said, God, let me get out. said, Peter, James, and John, you come here a minute. Yeah. The father and mother, you close the door. Now look, there he's standing alone. Got some faith around him. The vision of God moving in his heart. Perhaps God showed him in the vision to do that. And he got them all out. On the outside, no help at all. Just a big bunch of... Well, the very idea, let's get our priests together, let's go get the officers and come and throw that fanatic in jail. Why, he's doing nothing but disturbing our lands, that's all he's doing. And he doesn't teach according to the churches. Well, we know there must be something. And that man is, you know, that's illiterate to say that girl's not dead. The very idea, all oh, that unbelief howls around him, but he was possessed with the power he could speak into another world. Amen. The little girl laying there, cold and stiff. Jesus walked over there, picked up her hands in his hand, looked up into the land down beyond where her spirit was, and he called out in unknown tongues for her spirit to return back to them. That's right. That's right. Yes. And when he spoke that language, waiting out her in the supernatural realms where her little soul was, it returned back. And the wrinkles begin to come across her forehead. The blood begin to flash through her veins again. And she's trying to be led. So give her a little food down to kind of help that bloodstream along. Amen. Now so don't tell nobody about that. I must get out the back door and go. Why is he? Brother, little old Jairus was a believer from then on. He had a need. Jesus met his every need. Jesus Christ is here tonight to meet your every need. If you can believe it, he is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus raised from the dead. Do you actually believe that he raised from the dead? Well, if the Bible teaches he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he is the same, I want to ask you something simply just before we have the prayer line. Start praying for the sick. If that same Lord Jesus, the Scripture says He is the same, He's the same in principle, He's the same in power, He's the same in attitude, He's exactly the same Lord Jesus that He was back there. Is that true? When He was here on earth, He walked among man, a poor man, a humble man. He never had much of the world's goods. He never had any education. There's no, no place where you can ever see ever went to school even. He talked with common language. He dwelt among common people. He was rejected by the up and ups. If he was rejected then by the scholars and up and ups, he's rejected today by the scholars and up and ups. He did not claim to be a great person. 
He claimed that only one thing that he could do, that was just what the Father showed him to do. We have a record where he raised three people from the dead. That's all the Bible says. Probably several thousand died, but he couldn't raise them because he said he only done what the Father told him, what the Father showed him, rather. Well, I'll just give a little illustration quickly of his life for the next two or three minutes. When his ministry first started, they found the success when he prayed for the sick and laid hands on them. It was a marvelous thing how they got well. His fame began to spread abroad everywhere. Then the first thing you know, there was a man by the name of Philip who got saved. And he went out and found his brother Nathaniel, a friend of his, over around some other country. And he said, come see who I found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He said, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? He gave him a very simple answer. He said, just come and see. So he came over. And when he came up out there somewhere in the audience, or maybe in the prayer line where Jesus is praying for the sick, now watch what Jesus was saying. Jesus, perhaps, let's say he was standing in the audience. Jesus, praying for the sick, turned around when Nathaniel walked, walked up, and said, Behold, there is an Israelite in whom there is no God. He said, When did you know me? Well, you don't know me. I just come over here. How did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you, when he was under the tree, I saw you. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he said, You're the Son of God. You're the king of Israel. What if Jesus comes into the church and does the same thing today? You know what these people say? Mental telepathy. A devil goes to show. That's what they said back there, the high people that wouldn't humble their hearts to God. One day he went up around Samaria, sat down on a well, sent his disciples away. A woman come out to get some water. We believe it in the Western country that she is the veil fame. They don't believe that in the East. Whatever she was, she came out to get some water. Jesus looked over at her. He said, Woman, bring me a drink. She said, Why, it's not customary, sir, for you being a Jew, ask me a Samaritan woman to do such as that. But said, We don't have any dealings with one another. Like the race showed condition in the countries today, white and colored and so forth. Said, We don't have no dealings with you Jews, and you Jews don't have no dealings with us. He said, woman, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. Right. Well, she said, the well's deep, and you ain't got nothing to draw with, so how can you get any water? said, so the waters that I give is waters of life. Right. So he kept talking to her, to my honest opinion, now just before closing, he was contacting her spirit. When he found out what was wrong with her, he said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have any. He said, that's right, she got five. Why, she said, I perceive that you're a prophet. She said, now that's the sign of the Messiah. Notice that woman recognizing that? Isn't it strange that preachers can't get that today? He said, I know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things, all things. When Messiah cometh, that's the Messiah sign. So you must be one of his servants. You must be a, a prophet. But when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. So she ran into the city and said, come see a man that told me everything I did. I never told her but one thing she did, that was living wrong. But he could have told her everything if the Father would have showed him. But then they asked Jesus to come in. You know why Jesus didn't have to do any miracles in there? He knew that Philip was coming down after his death, burial, and resurrection. So he returned back in the spirit form and through Philip and had a big eating service down there. They were all ready for it. So then we find out a little later, let's take another instance. He passed through the pool of Bethesda. There are eight people on cots and stretchers and all pain, law, blind, withered, twisted, waiting for the moving of the water. And Jesus, full of virtue, comes through there, walk through that great mass of sick people and twisted and blind. What do you think today? Oh, listen close now, please. What if Jesus comes to Phoenix and the same Jesus that was back there then and all the hospitals dumped out all their sick along the street, all the infirms put out all their crutches and wheelchair cases and things, and Jesus walked right down through the midst of every one of them, thousands of them here, 
in Phoenix, walk right down through every one of them, claiming to be the Son of God, and walk over to a man laying on a pallet and said, I saw you here. I knew what's wrong with you. I know you've been here for all these years. You want to be made holy? He said, yes, sir. He said, I've got nobody put me in the water, so take up your bed and go into your house. And walk right on down through the street and leave every one of the wheelchairs, cot stretchers, lame, blind, halt, withered, laying there. Yeah. You know what Phoenix would say? That can't be the Son of God. That's the same thing they said there. Right. Now watch. When they caught Jesus and questioned him, the Jews, that's St. John 5. Now read the 19th verse. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. The Father worketh, I worketh the other two. What the Father wants me to do, he shows me what to do. I don't do one thing until he shows me by vision what to do, then I go do that. If that were Jesus yesterday, that's Jesus today. Now what did he say about it when he went? He said, a little while, and the world will see, will see me no more. Yeah. The world, the unbeliever, will see me no more. Yet you shall see me, ye, for I will be with you, even in you, yeah. to the end of the world. Amen. How long will it be? To the end of the world. Not the apostles' age, to the end of the world. Is that right? The scripture says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, now these things that I do shall you also. Even more than this, greater is the word there, but the dry translation is more. More than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. Is that right? I'll go away, and I will come again, and I'll be with you, even in you, as long as the world exists, and you will do the same things like I do, and the world won't believe you because they didn't believe me, but the believer will believe to the end of the world. There you are. In my life, what my ministry is, is to contend that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is not dead. His body is sitting on the throne of God's glory. But the spirit that was in him is right here now in the church, moving among his people. That's according to his word. Then, if that was his nature, and his attitude then days to do only the will of God, but enough of it to show the people that he was vindicated by God, surely you would believe it if you seen the same thing. Right. Yeah. Peter straightened the church out when he said, You men of Israel, and you that dwell in Jerusalem and Judea, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by signs and miracles and wonders which God did by him in the midst of you all as your witnesses. Yeah. He is being denied by the term and the counsel and the foreknowledge of God. And Nicodemus expressed his feeling about what the reading of the big stiff church that they thought about him. They said, he said, Master, we know that your teacher comes from God. We do. We Pharisee. We know it. We can't accept it. But we know that you're a teacher come from God, so no man could do the things that you do unless God was with you. Now, friend, don't be starchy. Accept him tonight. Believe him. He has risen from the dead. He's here with us. And I trust to God that this night that the Holy Spirit will make Jesus Christ known to you in the free pardoning of sin while we bow our heads a moment. The arguments will come. No one moving, if you please. Don't stir around just for a little bit. I want you to pray, everybody. Our beloved Savior, the resurrected Lord Jesus, Father, all the preaching that I could do, you can do more in one second than I could do in a thousand lifetimes. And we're looking for you to come, Father. We hear by the ministry and by the word 
and by the witness of nature that you're soon coming. Let everyone run tonight to meet you like your eyes did. No matter what people say, oh, no, there's no difference in the time. It's all just like it always was, all oh, no, the years away. We don't believe that, Father. We're looking for your how many times. If there be any hearts in your unprepared to meet you, may they feel like your eyes did. No matter what anybody says, they're coming now to meet you upon the basis of the drawing of the Holy Spirit, accepting as Savior through the shed blood. While we have our heads bowed, I wonder if there's a man, woman, boy, or girl in divine presence. Just raise your hand and say this to God. I now want to come to you, Jesus. Maybe I've been just a little upset, but I want to come right now and accept you on the basis of your shed blood. The Holy Spirit that come out of your own life is speaking to my heart, strangely warm. I think tonight ought to be my night to accept you. The only thing I can do is come, and here I am, Lord, by raising my hand, I raise it to you. Is there anybody on the bottom floor? God bless you, you, you. Oh, great host of mine. Way back in the corners of the building, way back in the back, anybody back in there standing up, just raise your hand, not to me, your brother, but to the Lord Jesus. Say, God, you see my hand, and then I on my death have mercy on me. I want to come home to heaven. I don't want to be a castaway at that day. Will you have mercy, Lord, as I raise my hand coming to you? Would you back there anywhere? Up in the balcony to my left, anywhere on the wall over there. God bless you, you, you. Oh, that's wonderful. God sees every hand. Young ladies, aged men and women. The balcony to my right. Anyone, God bless you all along the row there. That's wonderful. Anyone else, anywhere in the building, raising your hand. God bless you. You, that's wonderful. Great hope with all of the middle aisle. Over to my right. Great hope, God bless you. You know you can't raise your hand from the depths of your heart bleeding unless God's under obligation to give you everlasting life. Jesus said, He that heareth my words, believeth on him that sent me, has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death to life. If you only knew, my beloved brother, I see your hands over here to my left, raising sister and brother, yes, my people, just the Holy Spirit speaking to them, and raising your hands. God bless you, God bless way back in the back, yes. All through, everywhere, God be with you. You know, if you raise your hand with the sincerity of your heart to God, Say, Lord, this is all I know. Just raise my hand. That's what the preacher asked me to do. To believe in my heart that you died in my stead. That the innocent Son of God took my place to Calvary. And here I am, a guilty sinner. And I don't want to be separated from God and from my loved ones in that day. It may come before this week's over. For midnight tonight, it may come. You have no assurance that a heart may stop beating any time. I don't believe it's going to be too long until this city with the rest of the nations will be late ashes. Peck it around here, hunting uranium. Peck it in the barn. Blow your own stuff up. Right in the hands of wicked, sinful men. The whole nation just honeycombed. You wouldn't accept Christ, the nation wouldn't. You wouldn't accept the cross, so you're getting a double cross. Communism breathing, breathing everywhere like germs. Oh, God have mercy. I'm so happy tonight to be a Christian. Oh, don't leave this building without accepting Christ. And the only thing you have to do is from your heart believe that Jesus Christ took your place, the innocent Son of God, and was made sin for you. And you can't do a thing to save yourself. You just have to believe that He saved you and accept it in your heart as your Savior. Except his death in your stead. How much more could you want? Then raise your hand to God. Say, God, this is me. I now come. Just as I am without one Just keep praying. Raising your hand. God's looking. By the way.
Don't you feel real good now? You've done what he said. You've met him upon the basis of his shed blood. Now he is the Son of God. I'm just a man, not a thing. This here thing is a perfect mute. It can't speak at all, these speakers up there, unless something alive back here is speaking through it. And so is the man, just an instrument, just a play. But if Jesus Christ can take that person in full control, and if he'll obey his office, you can preach the gospel through him. He can speak with tongues through him. He can show visions through him. But for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, the day, and forever. Now I want to ask everybody before we call the prayer line, if the Lord Jesus will come on the scene here tonight, that you'll see that I've told you the truth about the Scripture, that Jesus lives tonight, just as real right here as he was in Galilee. And if he'll come on the scene tonight and will prove beyond a shadow of doubt that he's here by doing the same thing that he did when he was here, Will you accept him as your, as your guide and your Savior? If you will raise your hands, they were in the building. You will accept him as your guide and Savior. Everywhere in the building, up, up in the balconies, right, left, wherever it is, that you'll accept him. May the Lord Jesus grant that to you. Now, for the glory of God and for his being, how many people in here who does not have prayer cards? Raise up your hands. Who does not have prayer cards? Any word in the building? All right. Kind of solid across the special the front here. If you look this away when the Holy Spirit comes, if he does, no matter where you are in this building, and will accept it upon the basis of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, if you're a sick person, or have a spiritual need that you have need of, I'll assure you that the Holy Spirit will come turn and call you just like it did in the days of Jesus of Nazareth. And to you with prayer cards, or didn't, did you give out them? We took them all up the other day, prayed for every one of them, and I didn't know whether they give out any more prayer cards or not. What did you give out? Prayer cards. A P, up to a hundred. Let's um, let's call about a few of those. I can't get to too many. Just enough so the Holy Spirit will go to moving. Let's start from fifty tonight. Say from fifty. Who has prayer card fifty? Is it here? Raise up your hand. Anybody got fifty? All right, come over here. Fifty-one. Raise up your hand. Everyone who has fifty-one. Fifty-two. 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Everybody remember now, if you will. Let's see how if they can get out if all those come. Now, if you can't raise up, speak to somebody near you and they, they can pack you. And now if they're not all right there, we'll see because it may be somebody deaf and dumb. All right? Let's have those prayer cards 50, prayer card 50 to 60. Let's make a prayer card 50 to 65 while we're praying on these handkerchiefs. You have prayer card 50 to 65. You line up down here at the bottom, if you will. Just let those come. Just so we pray. Now the rest of you bow your head, if you will. Heavenly Father, into thy presence we come for the sick and the needy. And now these handkerchiefs, aprons, little bits of baby stockings, everything laying here, little articles that's going to the sick and needy. Be merciful, Father. God, we've seen you do so many things by this means. We just believe that you'll do all things. Bless them, Father. May thy spirit move now upon each of these little articles here, making the afflicted to be healed, the sick to be made well, to that poor baby in the hospital make it well, that poor woman laying at her dying, may she be healed. Everyone that it represents, 
May they each get well, Father. We send these to their places for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ for the healing of the sick. Amen. Christian friends, we were asked you something tonight. If the Holy Spirit will, I trust that He will. I I want you to do this for me. Will you do it as I ask you in the name of our Lord? There's no need to be trying to explain to you this mysterious thing. I don't know it myself. Never will know it. But like you're across the other side. But with my Bible. Ever seen the picture of it where the science stuck the picture of it? There was one man here a couple nights ago. Uh, the scientific world took a picture of it. Now listen, close everyone. If I do not live till morning, my Bible here, if I do not live till morning, my testimony about Jesus Christ is the truth. The first thing, as a little baby boy, Three minutes old, the pillar of fire hung over where I was born, in a little log cabin in Kentucky. All my life, it's come to me, giving me vision. I'm a Baptist preacher. I'm a missionary at Baptist Church, all named by Dr. Roy E. Davis, out of Dallas, Texas, and was made a local elder for the church at Jeffersonville. My first revival. 500 came to Jesus Christ out of a 3,000 congregation when I was 20, about 22 years old. I was baptizing them down at the end of Spring Street in Jeffersonville, Indiana, in the Ohio River, when nearly seven or 8,000 people standing on the bank bear witness at 2 o'clock in the evening, June 1933, how that a pillar of fire come down out of heaven and hung over where I was standing. The Courier Journal and Times News to know, it was the, um, uh, I'll get the name of the paper just in a minute, if I can think of it, local paper, great article, Mystic Light Appears Over Local Baptist Evangelist While Baptizing at River, very mystic thing, people could not understand, many fainted at the presence of it. The angel of the Lord come right down and hung over where I was. The Louisville Herald, for it was Louisville Herald, Herald Post of Louisville, Kentucky. Then, notice, all down to life it kept appearing. One day, under the appearing of this light, came forth an angel that told me I was to pray for sick people. I told him I couldn't do it. That's way years ago. He told me that God had called me to do so and he'd be with me. I told him I was uneducated and I wasn't very much of a minister. My speech is not good. I have no personality. I have nothing to present to the people. He said, I'll be with you. And it was with Moses. So when it be with you, you'll have two signs given to you to perform before the people that they'll believe. And he said, you'll know the very secrets of their heart. And that's what I was questioned about. And he let me know that that was the very same thing that Jesus of Nazareth, the resurrected Son of God, did. Many people come and look at it and said, it's psychology. People, I've had a great man say yes, Brother Bram. I heard all screaming and pointing towards it. I imagine I've seen it, but I believe it was psychology. In a debate where a Baptist preacher at Houston, Texas, before thousands and thousands of people come to debate about divine healing, he lost the debate on the ground. He didn't even get the first base. Many people were probably there. Was anybody there when the picture was taken? Raise your hand. Is anybody? There's people. Yes, you sure that. And while I was standing there speaking, I said, I don't claim to be a healer. I only claim to pray for sick people. I said, but I'll tell the truth about if the visions are in question, God will confirm that. I said, I can only say what God says is truth. And if I tell the truth, God's obligated to back it up. And this Baptist minister, heart of the, uh, a member of the American Photographer Association, to come take some pictures of him while he skinned Mr. Bosworth, my associate, and in an event. And he took his fist and put it on Brother Bosworth's nose and said, Now I'll take a picture like that. They had the big camera set right here. They took his picture. 
Then he pointed his finger at his face like this, said, now take it like this. And they took it like that. Young Baptist preacher, Dr. Ben, Southern Baptist Church. And then uh, made all those pictures like that. And then Brother Bosworth said, I'll know Brother Branham's in the building. If he wants to come dismiss the audience, all right. I came down, hundreds of people put their hands together, people even trying to touch your clothes, come down, we had a marvelous meeting. And I said, I am sorry that these things have to happen. But I said, I'm not a healer, certainly not. I only pray for the sick. I said, Mr. Best, if somebody, would you believe that people can be saved? Yes, sir. I said, what if somebody calls you a divine savior then? See? If I, by preaching the gospel of deliverance, for divine healing makes me a divine healing. If you preach they can be saved, on the same basis makes you a savior. And I said, you wouldn't want to be called that, certainly not. I said, you don't save people, you only tell them that Jesus saved them. And I'll tell them Jesus healed them. And that's the same thing. And I said, but I speak the truth. And if I speak the truth, God will vindicate the truth. And about that time, a whirlwind started from the heavens, and here it come down. I don't know where that. And this big camera shot the picture, and it was the Catholic boy that did this picture thing. And he went down that night. I said, God's already spoke. I'll just move out now. And then I went. I went on to the hotel, the Wright's Hotel. The Catholic boy and a Jew associate of his went down to develop Mr. Best's picture. He said, what do you think about that? I said, reckon that could have been? And the Catholic boy said, no. The Jew said, I don't believe none of it. And the Catholic boy said, but you know what? He said, if he was a Catholic, I believe it was true. But said in order to said, now he's back, his parents are Catholic, his people before him, said it might be. And so they took the picture in, that, not knowing what this would be, they took Mr. Bosworth's picture in so they could get it to Mr. Best, the glasses. And they put it in the acid, and he sat there and smoked a few cigarettes, so it went through the acid, brought the picture out, and every one of Mr. Best with his finger under Mr. Bosworth's nose, every one was blank. God would not permit that man stand there and put his finger under that godly, saintly old warrior. No, sir. And when he pulled my picture out, lo and behold, I heard my picture was there, but there was the angel of the Lord in the picture. And they called George J. Lacey. Anybody knows who that's about the FBI and fingerprinting the documents? Knows who he is. He's the best in the world. And they called him. He took it into Houston, into the Shell building, and put it on her infant ray light. He examined the camera for double exposure. He did everything that could be done for him. They took the picture many times before, but it wasn't under this, it wasn't authentic. A newspaper picture, camera took it, and we put it in a picture, but it couldn't be proven just by a newspaper camera. But this was absolutely authentic. It went to Washington, D.C., was copyrighted, brought back, Mr. Lacey passed his opinion and put it on document that it's the only supernatural being that's ever been photographed and all the world can be proven to be the truth. And here's what he said. Said the old hypocrite once said he meant the unbeliever that those lights over the saints and the Jesus was just psychology. He said, but Reverend Graham, that mechanical eye of the camera won't take psychology. Said the light struck the ladies. And there it is. What is it? The scientific world knows that I told the truth. There it is to prove it. That's a better, that's a better vindication. And I'll say this. My Bible here, that same light is hanging two foot from where I'm standing. That's exactly right. It's like, it's like a sixth cent. It's right here. Right up in this direction. I'm not a fanatic. I'm a Christian minister. And that's the truth. If he comes and anoints in a few minutes, you'll see if whether it's the truth or not. But if you see him, all right. If you don't, this is a better vindication of what you can see. If you'd see with your eyes, it might be an optical illusion. But that camera won't take an optical illusion. This is the scientific proof that the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel, which is none other than Jesus Christ himself, has raised from the dead in the form of the Spirit and with the church tonight moving on with the same signs of wonder. You're without excuse, friend. You must believe him and live. May God grant it is my prayer. We're not here to sell pictures. We don't, nothing sold on Sunday anyhow. But if you don't want one, I wish you'd come look at it. Even write to Mr. Lacey himself and ask. There's a document all wrote out and everything in the books and things there. Signed by him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I say this for your glory. 
that the people might know, Lord, there's so much isms and fanaticisms and everything else in the world today, so many different ideas of things. And Father, we're down, Lord, that we're not trying to say that here at the platform, we're the only ones that have your message. God, I'm trying to tell them that every believer, every one that believes, is brought into relationship with the Lord Jesus. Thou knowest the heart of your servant, Lord. And I'm only saying this that the people might have perfect faith in the Son of God to know that he has raised from the dead. Father, hear me, please, I pray, that thou grace, found grace in your sight, grace your servant tonight. I have spoken your word. The picture has declared to the scientific world. Now, Father, will you come and take over our bodies here? And move in the audience to prove the people that you are here to do the same things you did when you were here in Galilee. Then the judgment bar, they'll be without excuse. Then I pray that you'll confirm your word tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now to the audience, to you here, with the prayer cards you signed up. Now I cannot say that you're going to be healed. Do you hear all the stretchers and cops and chairs and out there in the audience? I cannot say that you're going to be healed. But I say this. If you are on the basis of first the Word of God, that's the first and foundation. On the basis of the Word of God, will accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your healer. And believe that I've told you the truth. Watch what God does for you. That's it. And now to the people in the audience. Yes. Did they get them all in the line? How many did they call? That's all they got for them. All right. All right. Or is this the person? How do you do, Lee? Now, if the engineer will watch this. Sometimes when anointing strikes, I do not know how low I get. It's in another world. I'm going to ask you, please don't move around, will you, for me tonight? It just nearly kills me when you're moving around. It takes every spirit just in line, pulling. Now, just be real reverent. The brethren here will tell you when they take me from the platform. <clears throat> and if he anoints me tonight, I never know when leaving the building. I bid you, God's grace be with you. Hope to see you here tomorrow night. Until then, may God overshadow us now with his presence. Now for the glory of God and for the, the vindication that his son, Jesus, raised up from the dead by the power of God and is to be with us to the end of the world, I take every spirit in here under my control in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. Now, sister, I want you to come here. Or just that. That's all right. Stand there wherever you wish. But I just want to talk to you a minute. Are we, we're strangers to each other, I suppose. I have never seen you in my life knowing you. Now, I want the audience to, just a moment. Here stands a lady that's a perfect stranger. I have never seen her. We don't know one another, know nothing about each other. But God knows both of us. Now, if Jesus was standing here wearing this same suit, and the woman may be wanting healing, she may be, I don't know what she's wanting. God knows that. I can't tell. And there's no way for me to know what she wants. The only way it could have to be to have be revealed to me some way what the woman wants. Is that right, sister? It would have to be. Now, if Jesus is raised from the dead and was standing here in a physical body like I am, if she wanted healing, could, now be careful, could he heal her? No, because he's already done it. See, he did that when he died at Calvary. What if she's a sinner, wanting salvation? Could he save her? No. He did that when he died for Calvary. She has to accept it. That's right. See? He cannot. He can, all can be done for you is already done. The only thing you can do is accept. See? Not any man's no divine healer. God's already did it. You have to accept it. No man can save, forgive sins. God's already did it. You have to accept your pardon. But if God, by the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, will come and will let this woman know, just like the woman at the well, she had something that she had on her heart. She was living with 
had found husbands, if God will come and reveal to this woman her cause of being here, her trouble, whatever it is, will all of you out there believe then that Jesus is risen from the dead? I want to see your hands way back in the back, if you will, everywhere. That's right. God grant it. Now let's be one of God. Now I want to talk to the woman like he did. Just to say to her, just merely to see what he will say. Now, we being strangers, my sister, not knowing each other, no way of knowing each other, just met here for our first time in life. Perhaps let's be passed on the street. This is as close as we've ever together in our life. Somebody give you a prayer card. Your number was called, and you just come up here, a little card with a number on it. And you're brought up here. Now, it'll have to come to God if anything is to be done. Isn't that right? There's one thing that something happened to you not long ago. It's something about the hip. It's a bone that keeps slipping out or something, causing a getting sore in your hip. That's the truth. And they, you have lost a, a, a sense of your body, which is a sense of smell. You can't smell anything. That's the truth. What if I tell you Jesus Christ has healed you of it? Do you believe it? Amen. I you, believe it. You are healed. God bless you. You're healed. Really? Do you believe? Just have faith now. Everyone in the building out quietly. The Holy Spirit's here. How do you do, lady? Our guests, uh, you and I are strangers to each other also. We do not know each other. But God knows us both, doesn't he? You believe that by the Holy Spirit, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, as plain as I have made it tonight in the Bible and other nights, that if he has risen from the dead, he does the same today that he did then. Now, if the Lord Jesus will let me know what you're here for, will you believe on him and accept, accept it? Now, us being strangers, you and I, to each other, not knowing one another, first time of meeting in life, then something would have to reveal it to me. Is that right? And you would accept it to be the resurrected Lord Jesus. Will the audience do the same? Now, may he grant it. You're aware, sister, that something's going on. Now, right between you and I has dropped this light. Now, I don't know whether you see it or not, but you're moving away from me. And I see that you are... It's something about a, a wreck, an automobile accident, a wreck. But you've accepted your healing for that. I see you coming through a prayer line. It was my prayer line, a fast line of some sort. You accepted it. That's the truth. Then I see something still moving at your heart. You're here for something else. And that's a girl or a woman. It's your daughter-in-law. That's right, isn't it? And she is a, she has a, a condition that's a, a growing something. It's a tumor. She is a tumor. And she has some kind of a blood, a rare blood. I see the doctor very much puzzled about it. It's a rare blood disease. That's the truth. And your husband needs healing too. He does. A hernia. Isn't that right? And he's sitting right out there. <laughs> now you believe? Go and receive as you have believed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith in God. Now, friend, everyone in here ought to believe right now and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. For it's infallible God will hold you responsible at the day of judgment. To you newborn babes just come to Christ, aren't you happy you accepted the Lord Jesus? Sure. He sure He loves you. He loves all of you. Now, those 
visions now is what makes me weak. Just have faith, don't doubt. Lady, sitting there praying to get rid of a headache, do you believe God will heal you sitting there with your hand up like this? Raise your hand if that isn't the truth. Jesus Christ has healed you. Hallelujah. Amen. See? Little lady sitting next to you there, she kind of struck her. The light's hanging over her. You're suffering with a nervous condition, aren't you, lady? Raise up your hand or stand to your feet if that isn't right. It's the truth. It's the truth. God bless you. You go home healed now. I see you standing weary or something or other. It's a devil, a tormenting, a kind of oppression. It's left you now, sister. Your faith's made you whole. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 He doesn't Hallelujah. fail. He's the Lord Jesus. Have faith. Don't doubt. This the patient. How do you do, lady? You believe me to be the servant of the Lord? The reason I say that, not you believe me as a man. Peter and John, when they passed through the gate called Beautiful, said, look on us. It was to catch attention, you see, so they could see what the Lord was going to do. And that's the reason I said that. The angel said, you get the people to believe you. Then be sincere when you pray. Now, we're strangers to one another, aren't we, sister? I don't know you. I've never seen you. You've probably never seen me. We were born probably miles apart and years apart. And the first time, as a man and woman... You are a Christian, a believer. We meet the first time as brother and sister here in the presence of the Lord Jesus. That is true, isn't it? You watch, he's absolutely the truth. And as serving the Lord as long as you have, yet you're right now a witness that something is moving out here that's kind of a little different, isn't it? Kind of a real sacred, loving feeling. If that's the truth, raise up your hand like this so the people can see. See, it's moving between us. You have, uh, you are, have had some trouble. It's with the head. And it's right in the head. It's a cancer. And I see somebody uh, walking around. Oh, it's, a, it's in a doctor's place. And the doctor burnt the cancer off, but the cancer won't heal up. It isn't going getting well. And you want me to pray for it to get well. That's thus saith the Lord. That is true. Come here. Precious Savior, Thou alone can heal. And in respect of thy word, Lord, which is the truth, I lay my hands upon this woman. Whatever her need is, Lord, thou knowest alone. And I pray that you'll give it to her. And may she be made whole of whatever she has. In Jesus Christ's name, yes. amen. God bless you, sister. God bless you. How do you do, lady? Supposing that you and I are, are strangers to one another, God alone knows us. He's fed us since we were, we were born. And I have no way of knowing nothing about you. You're total strength. You want to get over that liver trouble? You do? Your faith heals you, sir. That lady sitting next to you has the colon trouble, too, don't you, lady? Your faith has healed you. Jesus Christ makes you well. God bless you now. What did that you say? The same thing that our Lord, our Lord Jesus did that. They pulled the gift of God with their own faith. The woman and man were sitting there praying in their heart, not knowing one to another. If that's the truth, raise up your hand, Mr. You and she there. 
the truth, that I would turn around and say something to you all, be that you had not a chance to get to the platform. Isn't that the prayer you were praying? If it is, shake your hands like that. Up. See? See, brother, sister, it's our lovely Lord Jesus. He's raised from the dead. He's sure he loves all of you. Have faith, believe him. Now, just a moment, a lady. You believe? You're suffering with uh, something that looks to me it's a dark sheet that hangs near you, which I, it's a nervous condition. You're real upset and nervous, I see you. Have a lot of uh, uh, premeditating of things. Take things over into your own thinking that something's going to be, and usually it's wrong. I'm not reading your mind, but that's the truth. Your life could not be hid now that the anointing is between us. You're suffering, too, with something that's stiffening you. You're trying to move. At times, it's arthritis that's moving you. And here's something that you might understand also. You had an accident by fall, and you broke your wrist. Isn't that right? You believe you're in His presence? You accept your healing? If God Almighty shared with the anointing to know you and know all about you in a dimension that you can't see, but you know something's coming forth that declaring in the natural, it's supernatural, then he said, these signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that the truth? Then for your recovery, I ask for your healing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, ladies. Have faith in God. You believe Him? God heals you of that lung trouble sitting there. Don't worry. He makes you whole. God bless you, yes, sir. Your faith has saved you, sir. God be with you. Come. We're strangers to each other. We do not know each other, but Jesus Christ, God's Son, knows both of us, doesn't he? If God, by his Holy Spirit, then through his unprofitable servant, will tell, tell you through me, it's your own faith that does it, lady. Tell what your trouble is, will you believe that? I've told the truth about Jesus Christ raised from the dead standing right here. See, it's your faith that does it, like the woman's faith that pulls right from the Master. Like blind Bartimaeus, the same thing. Your trouble is your no in your nose. That's right. It's a cancer growth in your nose. That is true. Jesus Christ is sure to make you whole. You're in his presence. Father God. Have mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for her healing. Amen. Look, lady, I want to tell you why that's so easy. There's a man standing right behind me that had cancer in the nose of the same type. In Calgary, Canada, I laid hands upon him with the same thing, telling him, and it's gone. That's been seven years ago. Is that right, sir? When I felt that, the witness of your spirit moving this away, knowing you'll be as he is. Have faith. Now, lady, you don't feel us. You can keep your head bowed, the patient here, if you wish to. It's not reading your mind, <laughs> you know that. But just keep your head bowed if you wish to. I will just talk to you till God shows me what is the trouble. Then you'll accept it, won't you? Now, this can go on hour after hour, but yet, as soon it makes me so weak as the people go to believing, I'll say this right now, that if this audience with one accord would accept what they now believe, there wouldn't be a feeble person in the building. If you could accept it on the same 
same ground that you believe it on now. Now, I want the lady, as far as I know, sister, you and I are perfectly total strangers, aren't we? Never met each other in our life. There's no way at all for me to know anything about you, unless it's revealed some way. You believe, you certainly you're a real believer. I can help you. I can't. God can. But through a divine gift, that your faith will operate itself. Oh my, I tell you, that audience is illuminated. This is the best faith you've had since I've been in Phoenix. You're having some trouble in your chest, and you've got a heart condition. Nervous, that's what's causing your heart to be that way. Flutters, carries on, especially laying down. You're extremely nervous. You have spells that comes on you, makes you weak. And especially when you have to, you're doing your work, you go sit down a whole lot. I see you moving, doing something, and you just, you get melancholy at times, real weeping. I see you wiping the sides of your glasses, standing in a room near a table. And I see you somewhere, you're in an office of some sort. If the doctor, it's a, oh, he wants to operate on you. And it's for a fistula condition. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Come near. Almighty Jehovah, in the name of the Lord Jesus, bless this woman with these people in the audience. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Have faith. Sister, if someone thinks that out there I was reading mine, I want you to put your hand on mine. I don't want to read your mind. I don't read your mind. I don't want you not to even think of what's wrong with you. I want you to think of something else. And if the Holy Spirit will reveal in a vision out here while I have the woman's spirit in contact, what's wrong with the woman? Will you forget about all about mental telepathy and everything? God grant it to you. A lady suffering with a lady's trouble, it's a female condition. If that's right, lady, take your hand off of mine and raise it up to the Lord, the lady here. You have a, a weakness of a female trouble. You're having a, a gloomy feeling also, which is caused by that. And you've got lots of things that you think that is wrong with you, which the main thing comes back just to your age and time. That's the truth. Isn't that the truth? I didn't have to look at you to see. See, uh, I, whatever he said, I don't know now what it was. What was it? Females trouble? Look this away just a moment. I just got this ring through the cancer ring. I had cancer. It's something wrong with my right side. And since then, my heart is. The only thing I know is seeing those doctors and things examine you in this condition. That is truth. You see what? That's right. So you believe now that Christ will heal you? You accept your healing? Do you believe out there that God will heal her? Right then, Father God, I pray for mercy that you'll make her well. May she go from here and be well as I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. All right. Come, little fellow. Bless his little heart. This is the child. Little boy, God knows I don't know you. But if the Holy Spirit will show me out here what 
is wrong with the little boy. Little boy, will you raise your hand if God will tell me what's wrong with you? Now keep your little hand down. The little boy has something wrong in his throat. It's asthmatic condition. He coughs a lot at night. If that's true, little middle man, raise up your hand if this is true. You believe Jesus is going to make you well, honey? I do too. Dear Heavenly Father, is this lovely little boy stand here and his little blue eyes looking up in deepness of sincerity? I ask that God Almighty, through the resurrection of Jesus, will make the little fellow well. In Jesus' name, I take this curse off of the boy. Amen. God bless you, little boy. Go now, believe him with all your heart. All right, come, sister. I want to ask you, do you believe God can heal you if that kidney trouble make you well? you believe it with all your heart? Father God, we pray that you'll heal her and take this curse off of her. And now, in Jesus Christ's name, we ask it to go. Amen. Have faith now. Please Please with all your heart. God bless you. Bring the little sister. Bless you, honey. Do you believe Jesus will take this asthmatic condition from you and let you quit coughing and going on where Mother has to get up at night and take care of you? you believe he's going to do it? I do too, honey. God in heaven, have mercy on the child and grant this blessing through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. God bless you. All right. You believe? Sister dear, what's arthritis to God? He can make it well just the same as he could cure toothache, can he? You believe he does it now? Then if you believe it, you shall receive exactly what you ask for. God bless you. Go and may the peace of God be upon you. Come, lady, do you believe with all your heart? What's God? Why, it's easy for him to heal your stomach trouble, isn't it? Would you like to go home and eat a great big hamburger again? Go do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, it was a strange thing when I said stomach about her. You had the same thing, and you was healed sitting in the chair. Just go on. God bless you. How do you do, sister? You want your back to be healed and made well? You believe it with all your heart that God makes your back well? Then you can go and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's say praise the Lord. Amen. Just a moment. Have faith. Was that the lady was at the platform sitting there weeping just now? Was you the lady up here? It was. Been suffering extremely nervous too, haven't you? You got something you want to give up also, don't you? That's your husband sitting next by you, isn't it? He has stomach trouble, doesn't he? He wants to give up something too, isn't that right? Stop your smoking now, and Jesus will make you completely whole. Amen. Amen. You believe? Is this the lady? How do you do, lady? You believe the Lord Jesus, the Son of God? You believe me to be his servant? You're suffering with a trouble in your head. Then you've got a boy that you want me to pray for because the boy's an alcoholic. Thus saith the Lord. Go believe and receive what you ask for. You believing? Some of you people in these stretchers here. Have faith. Some of you in chairs. I can't heal you. What about you, lady? You believe with all your heart? I can't heal you. Laying here in a stretcher. Cops. 
I can't heal you, but if God will reveal to me what's your trouble, will you accept it? You will? If you can believe, you got a nervous breakdown, and you're laying there uh, with your nerves broke. If you want to believe Jesus Christ, I can't heal you, but you can't hide your life now. But if you will do as I tell you, as God's servant, you'll rise up from there in the name of Jesus Christ and go home. I know you think you can't walk, but you can. What do you think about it, lady, laying in this next stretcher? If God will reveal to me what's your trouble, will you accept it? Will you obey me as his prophet? You're laying there dying with TB. But Jesus Christ make you well. Do you believe it? Then if you do, take up your bed and go home. Be made well.